Alrighty, so here I am showing you guys my complete novel collection, 2018 of August. Um, I have a lot of these. I have, yeah, um, so this is going to take a while, and I have kind of limited room, so I have them stashed in random places. So I'll have to do some sorting around and shuffling and stuff, but yeah. Get started, um, all seven Chronicles of Narnia books, that's a great series. I probably, I might reread those and re-rank those, because that's a... It's a good series. I like C.S. Lewis as a writer. Writer. Um, next up is three Al Capone books. Does my shirts, shines my shoes, and does my homework. That's a good series. Um, it's about a kid who lives on Alcatraz. Um, next up is Peter and the Star Catchers, the series. There's Peter and the Star Catchers, Peter and the Shadow Thieves, Peter and the Secret of Rundoon, and Peter and the Sword of Mercy. I read these two and kind of went, got halfway through this one and then just kind of lost interest. I'll, I'll, I might go back and reread them, though, one day. Next up, Invention of Hugo Cabret and Wonderstruck. Now, that author, Brian Selznick, I really like because he makes books that combine illustrations and words but aren't exactly comic books. Let me um show you, you know what I mean? There's lots of really cool illustrations here, really cool black and white ones. Um, yeah. Next up is Inheritance Cycle. Um, Aragon, Eldest, Brisinger, Inheritance. Really good fantasy series. A lot of people say it's just a rip-off. It, like, combines Star Wars and Lord of the Rings. And, yeah, maybe to some extent it does. But I still think it's a good series that stand on, stands on its own. I think my personal favorite one is this one, Eldest. And my least favorite one is, Inher is uh, Brisinger. Um, but I don't know where these two would fall. Um, so, yeah. Next up is... is Art Projects Galore. Um, Stephen King's Different Seasons. This has four stories in it. It has The Body, Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption, Apt Pupil, and something else that I don't remember. Um, I've read three of those four. The, the one I don't remember is the one I haven't read. Um, they're pretty good, you know. The Body is the was the inspiration for the movie Stand By Me, which is my favorite movie of all time. So I really, you know, I really enjoyed reading that. And of course, The Shawshank Redemption is a great movie, and so I enjoyed reading its source material. Next up is Jurassic Park and the Lost World by Michael Crichton. Um, paperback form. Ugh. The first book's really good, and it, um, the movie diverges from it a lot, but this one, this book's, this book's pretty good, but the, the movie diverges from that a lot. Um, next up is Walking Dead, Rise of the Governor, Road to Woodbury, and Fall of the Governor Parts 1 and 2. That's a decent series. It's, um, it exists in the same universe as the comics, not the show, so the continuity is, you know, a little different from the show. Next up is Pendragon. I think that was a gift, because I really don't, I haven't ever read it or really even considered reading it, so. Um, next up is The Hunger Games. That's a, you know, start to a decent trilogy. To Kill a Mockingbird, very good book. Um, one of the best books in American literature. Steelheart, um, fun action book about superheroes um frankenstein another really good book only it's not american literature uh, british is mary shelley british i don't know uh european literature um then they have darth paper strikes back the secret of the fortune wookie and the surprise attack of jabba the puppet um i read all four of those you know they were fun kids books i mostly just got into them because they were star wars related i started reading them when i was in lower school next up is the tapestry book three the fiend in the forge um this book i read the first two in the series like when I was in lower school-ish, and I never really got around to reading the third one. I think if I want to read the third one, probably if I want to read the third one, I should reread the first two. Um, next up is Joss Whedon, um, The Complete Companion. This is just a collection of essays written about all the various all the various media Joss Whedon has produced, whether it's his X-Men comics, his Buffy TV shows, his movies, um, and it's, it's really insightful. I'd recommend it if you like looking at things for deeper meanings. Next up is The Ables by Jeremy Scott. Okay, um, Jeremy Scott, the author, is the guy who runs CinemaSins, the YouTube channel, so I just bought his book, so I was like, yeah, screw it. Um, next up is Life of Pi. This is one of my favorite books ever. Like, I love the way Yann Martell describes various philosophies and various things like that. Um, then there's The Martian by Andy Weir. I haven't read that, but um, would like it. Would like to. Uh, 39 Clues Book 11, Vespers Rising. There's like 20-some books in that series now, probably even 30-some. And I read the first 10. Um, they were gifted to me by a friend. And they were pretty good, they just got repetitive. And then this one's the 11th one that I only read like the first little part of. 
Next up is The Hobbit, first book in J.R.R. Tolkien's uh, franchise. Young Man's Guide, a gift from my parents. It's just various little sayings about how to be a good young man. <laughs> uh, Me and Earl and the Dying Girl, I really like that book. Um, very touching, very emotional, has a lot of good messages behind it. Then there's the Septimus Heat books, Magic, Flight, Physic, Quest, Siren. Then there's, I think, Dark and something else out right now. I only read the first four. Um, they were pretty good. Interesting. Interesting take on magic. There's this book called The Eleventh Hour, which is a mystery book that uh, makes the reader figure out the mystery, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Dragonology, just fun, fake information book about dragons. Dinosaur Dictionary, I like dinosaurs a lot as a kid, and so uh, that's one of the few books I haven't given away over the years. These are two, these two books, one of them's about dragons, one of them's about mythical creatures and how, you know, oh, somehow they might exist and, you know, all that whatnot. The Illustrated Book of Myths has myths from Greek mythology, Roman mythology, Norse mythology, Egyptian mythology, and many more. It's interesting, you know, describes a lot of folklore. Uh, Harry Potter, A Journey Through a History of Magic. Um, I haven't looked, I looked at that a little bit. It was a gift. I think it's cool. Um, yeah, uh, Nobody Likes You, um, Inside the Turbulent Lifetimes and Music of Green Day. Um, I haven't read that book yet, but that's on my to-read list. Um, because it's about how kind of in the early 2000s, Green Day was considered a strictly 90s phenomenon. And then it actually, you know, American Idiot brought them back to the forefront. Kind of made people understand they're not going away anytime soon. Um, read music. I've, I've always wanted to learn how to read sheet music. Um, I have, you know, these two music-related books right here. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I play acoustic guitar and electric guitar. But I've never really been good at reading sheet music. So I, I think my dad got that for me to kind of teach me how. Um, then there's Geek Lust. This book is funny. It was about um, what a lot of modern day fandoms look like and stuff. Then there's Zoo Break Frame to show off and hide out. There's like seven books in the series now. And the first one's Swindle, which I read but don't have. Um, you know, it's decent. Gordon Corman's a good writer. He appeals to kids a lot. Um, yeah. Um, then there's The Detective and Nothing Lasts Forever by Roderick Thorpe. Um, long story short, um, The Detective was the book, you know, the movie The Detective with Frank Sinatra, and they made the movie. But then when they wanted to make Nothing Lasts Forever into a movie, a sequel, they had to offer the part to Frank Sinatra, who was 70-something at the time, and he's like, no, I can't do another action movie. So they were like, oh, let's ask Bruce Willis to do it and make it not related to The Detective at all. So this is the book that the movie Die Hard is based on. Next up, there's Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and Quidditch Through the Ages. These are books that J.K. Rowling published under a pseudonym. Um, it's just various information about the Harry Potter universe. Uh, Maze Runner, Scorch Trials, Death Cure, Kill Order, Fever Code. Haven't read Fever Code yet. These books were okay. Um, you know, if you saw in my DVD collection, I thought, you know, they were fine. You know, they just weren't as thematically deep as a lot of other young adult franchises were. And that's where they kind of felt, that's why they kind of felt lackluster to me. Alright, now this is going to be a long one. Next up, I have all five Percy Jackson books. Um, only this one's in hardback. I'd like to get these three in hardback, but hardback takes up more room, so eh. This, this was my favorite book series of all time. I've read these two twice. I think I've only read these once, but I would like to go back and reread them. Um, now my ranking is this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. Um, yeah, um... That, and when I was a kid, that was my favorite book series ever. I really love Rick Riordan's writing, which is why I have all of these. Um, his three books about Egyptian mythology, Red Pyramid, Throne of Fire, Serpent Shadow, pretty good. Five books about Greek and Roman mythology, Lost Hero, Son of Neptune, Mark of Athena, House of Hades, Blood of Olympus. I would love to go back and read those and then make a ranking video, but I just, you know, reading all those books again would take such a long time. I might do it one day. But... It doesn't stop there. There's uh, Trials of Apollo, Book 1, The Hidden Oracle, and Book 2, The Dark Prophecy. I've read those two. They're pretty good. Then there's Magnus Chase and the Guards of Asgard, Book 1, Sword of Summer, Book 2, Hammer of Thor, and Book 3, The Ship of the Dead. I've only read the first one, but I'll get around to reading those two someday, you know. Um, they're pretty good. Pretty cool. The only problem with his books is the formula gets a little bit repetitive. The formula's always been, let's make our characters try to get to one place before... While there's a clock going, a timer going on, and that can just get repetitive over time. Oh, and um, huh, I also have Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Ultimate Guide, and the Kane Chronicles Survival Guide. Books about um, 
just them, those two series. Then I have Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the Demigod Files, and the Demigod Diaries. Um, the Demigod Files kind of relates to the Percy Jackson series, and the Demigod Files relates to the Heroes of Olympus series. Um, yeah, as you can tell, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with Rick Ryder, and I have all these books. Um, and I'm... You know, people still get them for me for Christmas whenever a new one comes out or my birthday, and I'll, I'll, I'm not gonna say no. I'll, I'll read it. Um, more reading material. So yeah. All right. So let's get some of these out of the way. All right. So next up is I have all the Rangers Apprentice books. I'm pretty sure, except maybe number seven. Let's see, there's Ruins of Gorla, number one, two, three. Where's three? Okay, I have all of them, but I, I think I left 3, 4, and lent 3, 4, and 5 to my cousin, so I have 1, 2, 6, and I never had 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, or 11, 12, alrighty, and then uh, prequel book, that's a pretty good series, you know, it's a good, it's such a little boy book, you know, I, um, you know, I got into it in lower school, and I'd recommend it for anyone who wants to get their, you know, lower school age boy into reading. Next up is Four Ender Shadow Books. No, yeah. Ender Shadow, Shadow of the Hegemon, Shadow Puppet, Shadow of the Giant. There's a fifth one out, maybe maybe even a sixth one by now. But I didn't read it. That's, um, I thought the first one was really good. Um, you know, it's, it's a spinoff of Ender's Game. Ender's Game, Speaker for the Dead, Xenocide, Children of the Mind, and I only read Ender's Game. I find Orson Scott Card's writing interesting, but kind of dull at the same time. Um, you know, Ender's Game and Ender's Shadow are both in my in my top 15 favorite books, probably. Um, and then I also have the fifth Ender's Game book, Ender in Exile. Outsiders. That was then, this is now. Rumblefish, Tex... Taming the Star Runner, and some of Tim's stories. Outsiders is a great book, best one of the best books I've ever read. That was then. This is now was pretty good. I just didn't like the ending. Tex, I feel, is the weakest of this little franchise of books. Um, I mean, not Tex. Rumblefish. Rumblefish is the weakest. Then Tex is pretty good. Tex is probably my third favorite. And then Chasing the Star Runner or Taming the Star Runner. My bad. Is the um probably my second favorite um then there's this book some of Tim's stories which is a really interesting concept um S.E. Hinton created a character called Tim and wrote stories that Tim would write down um and Tim kind of bases Tim kind of bases one of his characters the one named Mike after himself um and that's just a really cool idea it's what 14 stories woven together I would love to make a full review and talk about this book one day because it takes Essie Hinton as a writer and really does a lot with it that I really like. Yeah, Essie Hinton low-key created the original cinematic universe. You know, none of that Marvel BS. Um, because these books, they all exist, these five books, all exist in the same universe. You know, Outsiders is, you know, obviously the most famous, but then Ponyboy is in this one. And then Ponyboy from the Outsiders, and then they talk about the Outsiders in this one. And then there's some characters that kind of bleed throughout all five. Some of them are obvious, some of them are not. Um... But yeah, that's a really good series, and I really like S.E. Hinton as a writer. So let me put those away. <laughs> the only thing that bothers me is I have three of them in one edition and three of them in another edition, and that kind of bothers me, but whatever. See, Catcher on the Rye, I really like this book. I, I had to read it for um, high school, but I just I, I was captivated by it. I think it's really, really good. Holden, Holden Caulfield's a relatable character, and um, J.D. Salinger's a really good author. Wall Street Journal, my personal finance teacher got me this. It's more about how to keep up with finance and stuff. Um, filmmaker's Handbook, ooh, <laughs> big. Um, I saw, I just saw this in my um, my local books a million. I was like, hey, I want that. So I uh, told my mom, hey, that'd be a good idea for a Christmas present. And my aunt got it for me for Christmas. Um, William Goldman's Four Screenplays with Essays. I really like reading about screenplays and stuff like that. I have a book about how to make screenplays and stuff. Then this is um, this has four of William Goldman's most famous screenplays: Marathon Man, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, Princess Bride, Misery. I only read the last two because I already knew what they were about. But um, you know, I thought it was interesting, and it's it's a cool book. Been there, done that too. Book about how to survive in college. Huh. Vampire Hunter D. My dad. 
I don't even know what this is about. My dad said these books were popular when he was little, so I was like, oh, okay. Before Twilight ruined vampires. Ready Player One, my brother got me this. It's a pretty cool book. Um, I haven't read it yet, but, you know, I, I saw the movie and I thought it was cool, and this is probably, um, this will probably be a good read. Then there's The Disaster Artist. Um, you can see my review up for this. My, my review for this in a few days. Um, really interesting book. Greg Sestero is a good narrator, and the chronicles of kind of what happened while making the movie The Room is really interesting. Then I have four books, Dragons in Our Midst books. I only read the first two. The first one was all right. The second one I just did not like. Um, so I never really, I never really read the third or fourth one. I mean, not to say they'll they'll never be good. They might be good, but I don't know. So yeah. Um, I also have this book by Sid Field called Screenplay, The Foundations of Screenwriting. I read this whole book, and I really liked it. It's very enjoyable, you know, it's about how to write a screenplay, you know, and just the whole art of it all and how to make a movie. Um, so, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Um, see you guys later. Bye.